Hello friends, today we are going to see the past year NEET questions for the chapter cell cycle and cell divisions. In this video we will cover part 2 today. Okay, now let's go to the first question here. Look at the first question here. It was asked in the year 2013. The complex formed by a pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes is called dash. We've already discussed in the earlier part, that is part 1, about what is homologous chromosomes and how is it associated with the uh, concept called bivalent okay <clears throat> now you're given four options here you have kinetochore bivalent axoneme and equatorial plate the correct answer is bivalent why if you see bivalent is designed or it is uh, described as homologous chromosomes associated in pairs so how do you describe it homologous chromosomes associated in pairs okay now you're given four options here now what is kinetochore we already discussed that in the earlier uh, part one also see kinetochore is a complex of proteins that are associated with the centromere of the chromosomes which happens during a cell division right now what is axoneme <coughs> What is axoneme? Axoneme can be defined as a central stand or a strand of cilium. Okay, it's the central strand of cilium or flagella. It is composed of array of microtubules. Array of microtubules. Now, equatorial plate, you all know what it is. It is the alignment of the spindle fibers. We speak about that. Therefore, when it comes to complex formed by a pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes see the question already gives you a hint homologous chromosomes so whenever you get these kind of questions search for keywords so that it will be easy for you to answer so here the keyword in this question is homologous chromosomes the only thing associated with chromosome out of the four options is bivalent okay the correct answer is bivalent see other than that how can you relate this answer is during zygotine okay the second stage of meiosis one homologous chromosomes will start pairing together to form a complex structure which is which is called as synoptomimal complex okay the complex formed by a pair of synapsed homologous chromosomes is called as bivalent the other name for bivalent is called as tetrad okay it is called as tetrad okay so therefore the correct answer to this question is option b bivalent okay let's move to the next question here this question was asked in the year 2013 again 2013 now here during the metaphase stage of mitosis spindle fibers attach to chromosomes at dash okay so you're given again four options here you have centromere kinetochore both centromere and kinetochore we just now saw we just now saw what is kinetochore what is kinetochore it's a complex protein right it's a complex protein associated with the centromere of chromosome during a cell division to which the microtubules of the spindle attach so this is a definition for kinetochore now already in the definition we saw that it is a complex protein which will attach itself or it is associated with centromere therefore the answer cannot be centromere or it cannot be option c or d the correct answer goes to kinetochore okay now kinetochore can be described as a small disc shaped usually it will be in the disc shaped uh, structure at the surface of the centromere so where do you find it at the surface of the centromere okay and another another thing this actually serves as a site okay it serves as a site of attachment for uh, my for the spindle fibers therefore the correct answer to this question is kinetochore i have given you enough explanation for this you always have to remember that kinetochore is a complex protein that is associated with centromere and the shape is disc shaped it serves as an attachment for the spindle fibers therefore the correct answer is option b <coughs> now next question this question is easy actually uh, again it's asked in the year 2013 a stage of mitosis is shown in the diagram which stage is it and what are the characteristics okay so we are given four options here 
okay you have four options here we will discuss one by one what do you mean by late prophase they have given in the option a late prophase chromosomes move to the spindle equator okay now late prophase can be defined as the nuclear envelope breaks down what happens in late prophase the nuclear envelope breaks down okay remember this nuclear envelope breaks down i'm sorry it breaks down okay other than that the chromosomes will also get fully condensed during the late prophase so chromosomes move to the spindle equator is a wrong option therefore option a is wrong now coming to the next option metaphase now what do you mean by metaphase metaphase is a stage of mitosis we all know that and this occurs in eukaryotic cell cycle yes we know that apart from that what you can describe about metaphase is that it is a stage in which the chromosomes are at the second most condensed or in coil stage okay so what they have given an option b in the question metaphase spindle fibers attached to the kinetochore centromere split and chromatid separate so what did we see in metaphase the actual definition it is it is a stage in eukaryotic cells where the chromosomes will be highly condensed and coiled therefore option b is also wrong okay now the correct answer is option c okay now we'll discuss that metaphase chromosomes move to the spindle equator chromosomes made up of two sister chromatids right so in the previous uh, option b we saw that metaphase spindle fibers are attached to the kinetochores we said that the chromosomes are highly condensed and coiled apart from that the chromosomes carrying the genetic material will align to the equator okay simply equator or you can say it as spindle equator okay you can say it as spindle equator so once it gets aligned to the spindle equator what happens here what happens here it will carry the <coughs> see it is carrying the genetic information okay what is carrying the genetic information the chromosomes are carrying the genetic information and next it will align to the equator of the cell before it gets separated into each which is the two sister chromatids therefore option c is correct okay <coughs> now option d is again wrong anaphase centromere split and chromatid separate and start moving away no what happens during anaphase <coughs> anaphase can be described as a phase of course it's a phase in uh, mitosis it can be described as a stage of mitosis after the process of metaphase this will happen after metaphase and it is replicated chromosomes are split and newly copied chromosomes are moved to the opposite poles of the cell okay so centromere split if you ask it will not happen during anaphase therefore the correct answer is option c now let's move to the next question here this question was asked in the year 2011 select the correct option with respect to mitosis okay fine we'll go one uh, option by option okay first option chromatids separate but remain in the center of the cell in anaphase wrong what do you mean by chromatid first how can you define chromatid see chromatid can be described or defined that has been newly copied or a copy of such a chromosome of two of them still joined to the original chromosome by a single centromere before replication one chromosome will be composed of one dna molecule so what are chromatids they a chromatid is nothing but a chromosome okay a chromosome that will have a new copy okay it will have a new copy it will have a new copy of such a chromosome of two of them will spill which, which is still joined to the original chromosome see even if they are formed newly they are still arranged i mean they are still attached to the previous one the initial chromosome by a single centromere before replication what happens is when they get split up into two sister chromatids each chromatid will have one dna molecule in it so now you know what is chromatid therefore the option a is wrong now coming to the next option b chromatids start moving towards the opposite poles in telophase no that is also wrong third option golgi complex and endoplasmic reticulum are still visible at the end of the prophase no they will not be visible so option c is also wrong now option d 
Chromosomes move to the spindle equator and get aligned along the equatorial plate of the metaphase. So, this is something that we saw in the previous slide itself when we talked about the um, different phases, right? We saw that chromosomes move towards the spindle equator and get aligned along the equatorial plate in metaphase. Therefore, the option D is correct answer. Okay, the rest of the options are wrong. Now, let us move to the next question here. This question was asked in the year 2011. Uh, at metaphase, chromosomes are attached to the spindle fibers by their dash. Again, this is an easy question, already discussed question. We saw in the last two slides uh, what happens during metaphase. During metaphase, what happens? The chromosomes will see to that they align themselves in the equatorial plate or the equatorial plane. So, here when they attach, they have to get attached to something uh, that will um, keep them adhered. Okay, so either it has to get uh, attached to the centromere or it has to get attached to the kinetochore. And we already discussed it will not be attached to the centromere, it will only get attached to the kinetochore because kinetochore is associated with centromere again. Whatever be the basis, the attachment goes between kinetochore and centromere. Okay, therefore, the correct answer to for this question is kinetochores and we already discussed what kinetochores are. They are a complex proteins which are associated with the uh, centromere and their shape is usually disc shaped right disc shaped structure and um, they see to the alignment of these spindle fibers okay now you understand what is it and you can also describe kinetochore as a large protein okay as a large protein therefore the correct answer to this question is option c kinetochore very easy question in fact let us move to the next question here. This question was asked in the year 2010. Okay. During mitosis, endoplasmic reticulum and nucleolus begin to disappear at dash. This is an easy question again. We already discussed in the earlier slides. Um, we, we saw the correct options, right? Select the correct option. We discussed in that the Golgi complex, uh, what happens to the Golgi complex, endoplasmic reticulum, they get disappeared. So, when will they disappear is a question. Is it during the late prophase or early metaphase, late metaphase or early prophase? Okay. See, during mitosis, the endoplasmic reticulum and the nucleus begin to disappear at the early prophase. Also, nucleus and the cell become spherical and the DNA molecules will condense to form a shortened chromosome. Therefore, the correct answer is early prophase. Okay. Early prophase so here you have to remember two things what are the two things that you need to remember one thing when it will get disappeared early prophase okay the other thing what happens what happens during that phase also the nucleus and the cell will become spherical in shape okay spherical in shape and dna molecules will get condensed so three points you have to get you have to remember Okay, now you understand the question and the answer. Let us move to the next question here. Which stage of cell division do the following figures A and B represent respectively? So, this question was asked in the year 2010. You have fig A and fig B. Okay, figure A and B. Now, coming to the solution. So, now look at the options given here. You have four options here. Uh, metaphase, telophase, telophase, metaphase. Okay, now coming to the option number one, that is A. Now, if you look at A, it does not look like metaphase. You have the spindle fiber arrangement, so it cannot be metaphase. Okay, and in the option B, if you see telophase, it is obviously A is not telophase, and B cannot be metaphase. So, the correct answer is option C. Fig A represents the late anaphase. Okay, fig A represents the late anaphase and this will represent prophase. So, what can you tell about late anaphase? What you know, first tell me what is anaphase. Okay, anaphase can be described as a process of metaphase which replicated or when a replicated chromosomes are split and newly copied chromosomes are moved to the opposite poles of the cell. So, here if you see in the in the diagram, you can see it has moved to the opposite right what has moved to the opposite the chromosomes have moved to the opposite poles 
okay that is why we have considered this as anaphase late anaphase and this is prophase how can you describe prophase now now prophase can be described as a process of course it is one among the mitosis process apart from that you can describe prophase as a um, see it is a process in which uh, separation and duplication takes place you can describe it in that way okay the process that separates the duplicated genetic material carried in the nucleus of a parent cell into two identical daughter cells during prophase the complex DNA and the proteins contained in the nu nucleus known as chromatin will set will set to be condensed so now you can understand see with the poles with the migration of the poles the chromosomes towards the pole you can identify easily this as anaphase and here if you see you find the two sister chromatids so this will easily tell you it is prophase therefore the correct answer to this question is option c late anaphase and prophase next question this question again 2009 let's read it here synapses occur between dash okay now what do you mean by synapses how can you describe it synapses is a pairing of two homologous chromosomes okay two homologous chromosomes we already saw about this um, we saw in bivalent also see the difference between bivalent and synapses is that synapses talks about pairing okay while bivalent talks about the association with the homologous chromosomes okay don't get confused here synapses is a pairing of two homologous chromosomes that occurs during prophase so you can call that as zygotene stage okay zygotene stage okay apart from this the two chromosomes move together and pair uh, they correspond along their lengths as they slide to slide okay the resulting structure is called as bivalent so so the correct answer to this question is option c two homologous chromosomes always remember the difference between two, between bivalent and synapses see there's not much of difference when it comes to bivalent or synapses one is associate one is association and the other is pairing okay don't get confused the correct answer is option c two homologous chromosomes now let's move to the next question here this question was asked in the year 2004 if you are provided with the root tip of onion in your class and you are asked to count the chromosomes which of the following stages can you most conveniently look at okay you're given four options here again metaphase telophase prophase and all that out of the four options given here chromosomes will be prominent only at particular uh, stage okay um, see you have metaphase anaphase telophase and prophase the correct answer goes to option a metaphase why see if you look to the solution part you can clearly identify why we choose metaphase chromosomes are only distinct or it is prominent see they have asked us to count the number of chromosomes so you can only when it is visible when it is clearly visible you can count easily right right wise when we talk about the distinctness or when we talk about the visibility metaphase is the right stage for us to count the number of chromosomes so chromosomes are the most distinct in the metaphase stage in telophase stage they regain their coiled composition so they become condensed what happens during telophase they become condensed or you can say coiled whatever so you cannot count it is not distinct in anaphase the, chromato the chromatids will separate and move towards the opposite pole so what happens during the anaphase the chromatids will get separated and will move towards the opposite pole we saw in the previous slide okay we saw in the diagram right now what happens in prophase if you see the chromosomes appear thread like structures and they become individual chromatids once again counting becomes a tedious process okay therefore the correct answer is metaphase the metaphase is a prominent stage or a distinct stage where the chromosomes are clearly visible for us for counting purposes okay next question this question was asked in the year 2004 which one of the following precedes reformation of nuclear envelope during metaphase of cell cycle we already saw what is metaphase how can you describe it what is the purpose of metaphase what all uh, activities happen during metaphase right now coming to the options now 
Metaphase, as you all know, is a stage of mitosis in the eukaryotic cell cycle in which chromosomes are at their second most condensed and coiled stage. We already saw this. These chromosomes carrying genetic material will align in the equator of the cell before getting separated into two daughter chromatids or cells. Now, you have four options here. Look at the first option. Decondensation from chrom chromosomes and reassembly of nuclear lamina. Okay. We... During this metaphase like life cycle or the cell cycle, there is nothing called decondensation. Therefore, option A is wrong. Next, transcription from chromosomes and reassembly of nuclear lamina. Okay, formation of contractile ring and formation of phargomoplast. Wrong. Formation of contractile ring and transcription from chromosomes. No, the correct answer is option B. At the beginning of the metaphase or the mitotic phase, M stands for mitotic phase. What happens here is, is the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus disappear. What happens? The nuclear membrane and the nucleolus disappear. Okay, remember this, it's a very important point. The decondensation of the chromosomes will occur, but when the nuclear envelopes start forming, then the nuclear lamina assemble and chromosomes start condensing. So, decondensation is occurring, but it is not the whole process of the metaphase here. They are telling that decomposition of the chromosomes occur. But once the nuclear envelopes start forming, then the nuclear lamina will assemble and the chromosomes will start condensing again. Therefore, the correct answer is option B, transcription from chromosomes and reassembly of the nuclear lamina. Okay, the correct answer is option B. Next question. This question was asked in the year 2002. Best material for the study of mitosis is in a laboratory. Okay. Now, you are given four options here. It can be anther or it can be root tip. Now, what do you mean by anther? How can you describe anther? Do you know anything about anther? We already saw mitosis is very important uh, cell cycle and it is um, what are the functions or what are the activities that take place during my, uh, metaphase. Anther can be described as a part of stamen. Okay, it's a part of stamen right we all agree with that it actually produces and contains pollen and is usually born on a stalk okay so what is anther it is a part of stamen okay and it produces and contains what it contains pollen it contains pollen so where it is usually born on the stalk of the flower So, out of the four options given here, anther is the best material to study the mitosis in the laboratory. It's easy for us to study. You have seen many, uh, when you have carried out experiments in your lab, people will ask you, your teachers might ask you to take the anther, segregate it and find, uh, view it under the microscope. So, anther, if you see, the stamen of the pollen producing reproductive organ of a flower, collectively the stamens will form the androsium, that is the uh, that is, they are talking about the further part of the anther. So, the best materials to study about the mitosis is anther. Okay, anther cells are used to study mitosis. <clears throat> now, this here to your uh, right side, you have a picture which shows the root tip. See, root tip, <clears throat> when you don't have a choice or when you don't have uh, any other source to view or to study about mit mitosis, you can use a um, uh, root tip also to study about it. But, when you have an option of anther and root tip, it is always best to choose anther. Okay, when compared to root tip, anther will be more prominent and visible under the microscope. Okay, next question. This question was asked in the year 2002. If a diploid cell is treated with colchicine, okay, it is, it is called as colchicine, then it becomes what? Okay, now what do you mean by colchicine? How can you describe colchicine? Colchicine can be described as, I am sorry, colchicine can be described as, uh, 
see there is one particular uh, see that there, there are people who use some medications in the form of colchicine also colchicine is also used as medication uh, it is used to used to treat certain diseases or it can say it can it is used to treat particular disorders so colchicine is a medication used to treat especially gout you call it that you call that as gout okay um the other name for gout if you see it's called as bichette's disease in gout it is less preferred or you can call this as a steroid you can call this as a steroid simply it is a steroid you don't have to see to the much uh, uh, you don't have to go much depth in depth into it now if a diploid cell is treated with colchicine then it becomes dash okay as i already gave you an introduction of what is colchicine see colchicine inhibits the spindle formation what does it do the first thing it does is inhibits the spindle formation see why is it used as a medication i'll tell you but first thing it will inhibit the spindle formation due to which the chromatids are unable to separate during the anaphase which will result in doubling of chromosomes so if a diploid cell is treated with colchicine in col with colchicine that is doubling of chromosomes and it becomes so what happens when it doubles i've given you a clue when it becomes see when the chromosomes doubles it becomes tetrapolyd right it doesn't become see double if it is two it will become four understood so what does this colchicine does if it does to this particular diploid cell if you see it will actually help the doubling of the chromosomes so once the doubling occurs the diploid will become tetraploid therefore the correct answer is option b tetraploid and other than that colchicine is also used as a medication to treat gout and it is also called as a steroid okay now next question so let's read it here this question was asked in the year 2000 okay during cell division the spindle fibers attach to the chromosomes at a region called as so you're given four options here now coming to the options you're given four options chromatocenter chromocenter centriole kinetochore chromomere and all that now when i talk about spindle fibers we already saw the alignment is only towards the centromere or the kinetochore and in that also we said centromere is associated with kinetochore or kinetochore it can be associated with centromere therefore during cell division the spindle fibers attach to the chromosome at a region called as kinetochore option b this question is already discussed in the earlier slides where we saw what is kinetochore kinetochore can be described as a large protein or a complex protein in which the alignment of the chromosomes or the spindle fibers will take place therefore the correct answer to this question is option b kinetochore you can you can see to your right side the diagram which shows the kinetochore at, at that so that is the region where they get arranged okay easy qu question in fact if you had clearly listened to the earlier slides in de in detail then i'm sure you would have answered this question now let's move to the next question here this question was asked in the year 1998 microtubule is involved in dash okay uh you you're once again given four options here now we saw about microtubules already so what is microtubules what is a protein that is present in microtubule it has tubulin right so microtubules are they arranged or, or they are involved in muscle contraction membrane architecture or dna recognition see we have two things you have to remember microtubules and filaments microfilaments means of course they will help in muscle contraction and other activities like that now when you talk about microtubules the spindle fibers involved in the cell division okay you have you all know when it comes to a cell cycle we all know that spindle fibers play a major role now the spindle fibers which are involved in the cell cycle are nothing but the microtubules therefore microtubules are involved in the cell division okay this is an easy question but only thing you need to remember here is the spindle fibers are an important or a prominent part in the cell cycle and these spindle fibers are nothing but the microtubules that are associated with it okay next question how many mitotic divisions are needed for a single cell to make 128 cells 
okay now this question was asked in the year 1997 and this is the last question for this part 2 now uh, easy question in fact see in mitosis a single cell cycle or a single cell divides to form two daughter cells right it forms two daughter cells now they have told that how many mitotic divisions are needed for a single cell to make 128 if in mitosis we all know a single cell divides to form two daughter cells so it so the division is actually equatorial right equatorial division so when it is equatorial division for a single cell to make 128 cells you need seven okay how many mitotic divisions you require you need seven divisions in order to make 128 cells therefore the correct answer to this question is option a seven easy question in mitosis you always have to remember single cell will divide to form two now when it goes into equatorial division to uh, in order to make 128 cells you will need seven divisions for it to make 128 cells therefore the correct answer is option a okay so with this we complete part two uh, we will all meet in the next part three of the same chapter cell cycle and cell division until then take care and thank you